welcome everybody. It's time once again for another episode of SLMA Radio. Brought to you on behalf of the thousands and thousands of members of the Sales Lead Management Association. If it has to do with sales lead management or sales lead marketing, it probably starts here with the SLMA Radio Show. Today, as always, we're privileged, honored, excited to have with us the founder and executive director of the SLMA, Jim Okermeyer. Hey, Jim. Good morning, Paul. Our announcer for this program, as all of you know, and commentator is Paul Roberts. This is a live program, and listeners can call in at 949-330-7762 with thoughts, rants, and stories. All programs are available as podcast replays from iTunes, Stitcher, Fennel Radio, the SLMA radio site, and the B2B podcast directory. Next week, we have Mark Godley on from uh, Lead Genius. He's going to be our host for SLMA radio next week. After this program today, we've got Rooted in Revenue. And after that, Pipeline Radio and Jill Conrath is going to be interviewed by Matt Hines. We've got an interesting lineup. Today's program, and I want Paul to jump in with me today on this, is this is the title, The Argument. Does marketing now own the pipeline? Hey, the sales pipeline, a.k.a. the sales funnel, is the long-standing measurement of past, present, and the future of a company. In the not-too-distant past, marketing dumped demand into the top, the beginning of, of the pipeline, and sales took responsibility for the rest of the process. And in many companies, it's still that way. For years, marketing has chipped away, usually unintentionally, at various steps of the sales pipeline Most of this is made possible by marketing automation and telemarketing being managed by marketing and the advent of of the marketing automation program. After reading some of the more recent research and comments by people I respect, I think that the sales pipeline ownership has finally shifted from sales to marketing, and I'm going to make a case for that. Marketing in more sophisticated companies probably manages more than 50% of the pipeline steps now and to me, that means ownership has shifted. Paul, weigh in on this. What do you think about that? You know, it's a fascinating idea. Um, I think it goes to an even bigger question that, that you should do a show on as well that we've talked about on other episodes of other shows on this network. And that is, in a world of big data, who owns the overall data? not just the sales pipeline data. You're going to have this flood of data coming back from all these devices and this flood of data that's going to be collected over the Internet to be analyzed about every customer and every transaction. Whose job is it to collect and analyze that? Is it marketing? Is it sales? Or is it some new department, the data department? Well, it's the marketing operations department in most companies, which is gaining larger and larger strength and may eventually outweigh or have much more influence than than the product marketing people. It reminds me of what Matt Hines always talks about. Marketing used to be derisively calls the arts and crafts department. It's changed quite a bit. HubSpot recently reported that more than 50% of marketers devote at least half of their total marketing budget to lead generation. I think in many companies, it's a lot more than that. Almost a quarter of the marketers don't know, and I think it's a lot more than a quarter, Maybe only a quarter of HubSpot's customers, but it's it's a lot more than that in the average company. Nurturing leads can increase sales by more than 20%, and the reality is you can get two or 300% increase in the actual conversion. Two or three hundred percent sounds like a lot until you really measure it. Oh, well, you were uh, out of a hundred leads. You've been a sales manager and an interim sales manager at a, a variety of big companies, and I always smile because you say the first thing you step when you step into these new roles to to increase sales is just to get them to follow up with every lead it's really interesting simply because marketing has assumed so many roles in the traditional pipeline now let's take a look at what a pipeline is a pipeline is a series of steps in most crm companies correct it's awareness interest consideration intent evaluation and purchase Some companies, instead of A to F, have A to Z. I mean, they've got a lot of steps in there. They may throw in demonstrations. They may throw in reevaluation, all kinds of things. But most CRM systems beg for steps, and that's the sales pipeline. Now, in our early marketing days, we used to dump everything at the top of the funnel and then step away from it, right, Paul? Exactly. It was sales responsibility to take care of the rest of the funnel. Now that marketing operations is taking control and marketing automation, it's become 
common for the marketing people to start taking a look at not only awareness, but uh, I'm going to help on the inter- interest area. I've got the content mark. We're going to pound into those people who show specific interest in specific products, sizes, shapes, colors, whatever it might be. Oh, they hit the consideration level. Then we're going to give them a totally different content. It, it may be telephone calls. It may be emails. It may be invitations to webinars. We're going to bring that along any further. Oh, they've got an intent now. Well, I'm probably going to go ahead and give them totally different emails and content based on their voiced intent. Well, gee, we're 50% of the way through the funnel. Now you're saying we're, as they progress through the funnel, we're continuing to engage with them with different content, different messages, and keep feeding them, pushing them through the funnel. Will marketing people ever be responsible for actually talking to the customer, for calling them and pre-qualifying them? Well, they are now, yes. I thought you were going to go to the next step, and which is actually making the sales. Well, that too, yeah. yes. In many, many companies like Matt's and so many other companies out there, they're responsible for not only qualification, but taking them all the way through. Some of the big consulting firms out there talk about, uh, and have for several years, about three years now, that, that 70% of the people who inquire about a product have already looked at the product in depth, gotten literature, been on the website, and now they're ready to talk to a salesperson. So that tells you that marketing is already addressing 70% of those prospects' needs in some way, shape, or form. And the salespeople are getting into it after the person says, look, don't waste your time with telling me about all the product features and benefits. I only want to know one or two things. I want to nail down your price, and I want to nail down your delivery, and I want this proposal in the next three days. If I don't need anything else from you. I'll make my decision. Salespeople are just sitting there saying, whoa, well, who did all that? Who yeah. got them there? marketing what is the role of sales in this new process or can they just be they're just the closers yeah they're the closers in many now they don't like to hear that because they obviously have to take people through demonstrations uh they've got to take people through evaluations uh, very often that's all part of it depending on the product that's being sold but if it's not software if it's other hardware those things are knocked back I mean, we're talking about software. Yeah, you've got evaluations, you've got trial periods, all those kinds of things. But once you get away from software and it's into hardware, it's into medical devices, it's into machinery, it's into industrial goods, uh, they take people through. Marketing is really responsible. In many respects, marketing is actually running the inside sales department and they're completing the sale. That's what I was going to say. You know, What if somebody through through those early stages decides to step up and jump ahead and say, you know what? I don't need to talk to a salesman. I'm ready to buy right now. Yep. If they've got a if they've got the price and there's no negotiation, they jump right into it. Now, there is something else in the last couple of years called pipeline marketing. Hmm. Now, pipeline marketers say they just don't focus on the top of the funnel. They focus on fewer leads coming into the funnel and the intense working of all those inquiries all the way through to the bottom with the salespeople. Now, to me, that also smacks of what's currently going on. We'll probably have pipeline marketers uh, scream and send us email messages, and et cetera. But the reality is I think they've just renamed what's been going on all these years. They make a big deal out about about tying marketing to sales, but that's what marketing is supposed to do to begin with, tie the product interest to sales, right? Got a, I got another question, then. You, you keep raising all these issues. If marketing is becoming more sales functioning, if they are engaging more with the customers and beyond the initial lead they generate, will they ever have to change their compensation plan, as you've talked about many times? Right now they get paid whether they close deals or not, whether those leads turn into sales or not. They get paid for the process. They don't get paid for the results. Yes, it is changing. As I look at titles, for marketing people, Paul, and we run salaries, we see a lot of bonuses thrown in for a lot of the marketing titles. And sometimes that's for on-time performance on what they're creating, but many times. I also think, depending on the role, it's also tied to the sales figure that comes in. For some years, it was just inquiries coming in. And then they start paying marketers for qualified inquiries. And then the marketing department started managing the inbound telemarketing department and the qualification departments, two different ones. Then they started managing the outbound departments, which calls and create leads. 
because sales didn't want to manage any of those departments. Those people require way too much attention for an average sales manager. So, And they're paying those people on performance. Your answer is yes, many of them are getting paid on performance. And a lot of CMOs get their bonuses based on revenue, the constant revenue that comes in. And if they make their goals, they're going to get paid on those revenue figures. Wow. Well, again, that's a major shift. And I think that's one of the reasons marketing and sales always function different. The marketing people were there to create something and to generate, have it generate some leads. It, they weren't paid on whether those leads were good or turned into revenue. And therefore, it was all about how many can you crank out. In smaller companies, that's still the case. The bigger the company, the more likely it's going to be shifting to those pay-for-performance metrics, especially on consumer B2C. I know we've got to take a break to pay for some bills, as Matt Hind would say on his program, and we'll hear from a few of our sponsors. We come back. Paul and I will continue to discuss, does the marketing department own the pipeline versus the sales department owning the pipeline? Is that the future? Paul, over to you. Well, we do know that the future of prospecting it can be read right now in a book by best-selling author Mary Lou Tyler, in which she shows you how to rapidly add qualified opportunities. That's the key. I think that's what we're talking about here, not just sheer numbers, but qualified opportunities to your sales pipeline, ensuring consistent and predictable revenue growth. Wouldn't that be amazing? Get started right away, turning your business into a sales machine by downloading your free sample chapter at MaryLouTyler.com, just like it sounds, M A R Y. L-O-U-T-Y-L-E-R. Mary Lou Tyler dot com. Predictable prospecting. And, of course, we want to do a shout-out to Zuant, the new generation of mobile lead capture systems. You know, one can use this system at every trade show and event, or you can use it every day when you're on the road to present and send videos and literature to your customers right from your car, right from wherever you are. It looks great and eliminates the need for manually entering your leads later. Imagine that. That's smart. That's Zuant, Z-U-A-N-T dot com. All right, back to Jim and his fascinating look into his crystal ball at the ever-changing world of marketing. The question is, the argument is, marketing now owns the pipeline. Is that the case? Hey, I just came back from the exhibitor show in Las Vegas. There are a half dozen companies on the show floor just talking about managing sales leads, but there are a lot of sessions at the exhibitor show in Las Vegas about marketing ROI how you can prove it, how you can measure the trade shows. Two years ago, there wasn't squat there to speak of. In fact, I did a couple of them, one we did with Victor, Victor Kepi's over at Validar, and also did a, another one in the morning with Matt Hill of the Hill Group, how to train people, how to get the most out of your trade shows. But it's interesting, when I looked at the program, there are all these uh, sessions on marketing ROI. Now, that's because trade show leads are some of the best qualified leads you can create. Who creates those? The exhibits manager. The exhibits manager is the most powerful person in most companies. They create the most qualified leads. The qualified leads always turn into sales at a greater level. I contend the, the exhibits managers, pound for pound, create more revenue in the company than anybody else. They're a marketing person. They're not a salesperson. The salespeople close. I've been in sales for years, managed salespeople for 25 years, but they're losing power. Without the marketing departments today being driven by marketing automation, telemarketing, Scraping the internet for prospects before they even raise their hands. Using artificial intelligence to figure out what people want and where they're going. Sales is turning into the closer, and that's about it in many industries. What do you think, Paul? So let me ask, if that's true, that's a shocking turnabout. I don't doubt it is because, again, we've got more data and more ability and more demand to connect with the customer through everything. You don't just... One of the things I talk about all the time is the demise of direct response. You used to run an ad and then count the number of calls you got. You used to run a coupon and count how many came in. Now, all it does is drive people to either want to learn more, so you got to have something to follow up with, or it drives them to your website, at which point you've lost how people came in. You can ask them, but they're not going to say, I saw your billboard, I read your white paper, I listened to your radio ad, I saw you at a trade show, they're probably just going to come there and anonymously start searching. So how do we figure out what's working and what's not? We need data. We need information. All of that's seen, as you're saying, the growth of the marketing wing. My question is, 
What are the salespeople doing? Are they just surrendering? Are they accepting this new role as the closer because it's just easier? Um, or are they fighting back and saying, let us be part of the process? And if so, how? They don't have much to fight back now. The last two or three years, most of the reports coming out of the industry said there's fewer and fewer outside sales reps being hired. These are route salespeople and people go out and see people. A lot of those jobs are shifting uh, because of marketing or travel expenses to inside sales positions. And then inside sales departments have been reported as growing year by year. So people are putting on more people to qualify inbound calls, qualify inquiries, do the demonstrations that salespeople used to do. Uh, the systems engineers that get on the phone to go ahead and and help the prospect make a decision. And finally, the salespeople who are supposed to control all this. Salespeople are still involved in customer marketing. That inside sales uh, departments are really mark inside marketing departments. So I was going to so, say, are they under the are they under the oversight of the marketing people? Are they being managed by the marketing chief no. marketing officer? Still, the sales manager that's marketing is, is sales, still the sales manager is managing all this, but he or she's got fewer and fewer outside salespeople, depending on the company. And uh, so many of these roles are shifting to the inside departments now. Certainly, sales managers might control inside sales departments, but most of them don't want to. They've got somebody else that controls it because these people ask for too much attention. They get too much rejection. Hmm. Uh, it's very difficult to manage them versus outside salespeople. So very often, just because of the, them giving up, those departments are often managed by marketing people. Wow. As soon as they give that up, They've given up authority and given up power. Doesn't mean they don't have still have jobs and they're still not accountable, but it's not what it used to be. It's a different personality, though, isn't it? To do an inside sales job, to be on a to be on a order desk, to be on a to sit in a cubicle and take calls all day long, yeah. than it is to go out visit customers and wine and dine them and yeah. and handle the, their like needs. Yeah. The inside people have totally different talents. They're 100% different. They can be sitting there, and uh, nobody cares what they look like. They just care their about their voice and how much information they have to impart. Can they do the demo? Can they answer all the customers' questions? So sales is continuing to be under pressure as marketing has gaining. It continues to gain influence, and the influence is driven, I contend, by the marketing automation, artificial intelligence, the rise of the database marketer. Yeah, and big data uh, in general. We're going to have more data about our customers than we ever had before. I don't know what we're going to do with it all, but we're going to know much more about predictive analysis of what is likely to influence them based on the data we collect in their past behavior. We'll look at some of the people we've had on the uh, on the radio programs some in the last uh, six months. We've had some really interesting people. Laura Patterson, president of Vision Edge Marketing. Yeah. Really bright. Really looked at those databases. Marianne Vanilla, Vanilla Group, telemarketing, qualified leads. She only takes on certain clients. She's very, very careful what she does. We take a look at Jill Conrad. She's going to be on the radio program with Matt Hine in a couple hours. Rowan Morgan, she's at a demand generation company. It's a marketing company. It's a demand generation company. Yeah. Katie Bullard, Chief Growth Officer at DiscoverOrg.com, big database company. Fascinating. Uh, uh, if, if you haven't heard Jill before, I've heard her on some of your shows over the past few years. Fascinating discussion. She really thinks it's all about, if I'm not mistaken, social selling. It's all about how do you engage with their customer way when they're just sniffing around. How do you get them? How do you get them to believe that you're the best and you've got the answers and the solution? And for them to start a dialogue and a conversation with you, the kind of thing no salesperson would ever want to do. I don't want to just that's, answer your that's questions. A big, that's a big part of it. Yeah. You mentioned database uh, back in December. We had Anna Fisher on, head of lead generation at Zoom Info. Yeah. Uh, so they're right. a lot like the Discover Org in that they have huge databases. The companies, customers buy the databases. They guarantee the, the uh, accuracy of the databases, and they run marketing programs. That creates the sales. It's a change market, and I believe that marketing management is in the most powerful position they've been in since the 1920s, Wow! which is nearly 100 years. Wow. They are in the most powerful position in B2B marketing and B2C marketing because they are controlling so much of the pipeline. And you also have a different kind of marketer who is both creative and they're also math marketers. Yeah, like Matt they're Hines. People, I think Matt, Matt Hines is an example. He always talks about both sides of the brain you have to use. Yep, they're using the numbers. They look at the number of, total number of inquiries, qualified leads, what turns into uh, demos, what turns into 
the final presentations. And the marketers today are interested in all those numbers versus before they just said, I'll just, I'm interested in the top of the funnel. I don't care what goes on. And then they complain bitterly what goes on all the way through the rest of the funnel. It's really quite interesting how they back away from things. A couple of days ago, I had had a blog up on the SLMA website. The salesperson didn't do it. It's just a marketing excuse. And marketing used to say, well, my programs are great. It's the salespeople that aren't doing their job. And I used to use that mantra constantly when I was a consultant. But the reality is today it's the marketers that are doing the follow-up, the marketers that are doing doing the job so So they got no one to blame but themselves if their leads aren't turning into revenue if they're now held more closely accountable for the quality of the leads not just the quantity of the leads i said in the blog entry it's marketing's role today to go beyond just filling the top of the sales funnel the role has changed to fill and manage it most of the way into the funnel until the prospects show from their actions and responses that they are in the buyer zone. Amazing. It's getting into the buyer zone. The salespeople have have to take control of that last step or two. Will they ever take over the whole process and become the closers yeah, I themselves? Think they are. Yeah. Many are already. And uh, where it used to be the head of sales and marketing, pretty soon you're going to see a lot of titles that <laughs> reverse it. The, the head of marketing and, and sales. sales. Wow. And it's going to be a, a little different marketplace. Hey, I know we've run out of time today. Paul, thanks a lot for stepping in. As always, you've got deep marketing knowledge, deep part PR and sales knowledge. I, I feel like halves of the puzzle are shifting in power, and they're going to shift in titles. It'll be the director of marketing and sales. So I think we've, I think we've answered that question today. I think marketing now owns the pipeline. Your your thoughts and and kind thoughts today and deep analysis and thanks for your insight boy, it really paid for you to be the owner of that irish bar in the court <laughs> it sure did i don't know how you're always willing to listen across the bar <laughs> that's right exactly <laughs> paul roberts thank you very much Well, you've been listening to another episode of SLMA Radio, brought to you on behalf of the thousands and thousands of members of the Sales Lead Management Association. If that has to do with sales lead management or sales lead marketing. It probably starts here with the SLMA Radio Show, one of the many shows on the Funnel Radio Network for at-work listeners like you. 